Hey guys, Strifker here. Gonna do part two of my One Night in Karazhan card review. Um, I've done, let's say, around eight cards. Gonna do the remaining remaining around eight cards, and then there's gonna be just a couple. Oh, eight, 18 to 45. Okay, so there's actually still a lot of cards left over after this one. But yeah, gonna do the last, like, say, eight-ish cards that have been reviewed. Uh, gonna start with Babbling Book. Uh, it's a one mana, one, one mage card, which I'll cry add a random mage spell to your hand. So uh, I, I can see this card being, I basically only see this card being played in control mage, like something like a Reno grinder mage or, you know, Reno control mage. Uh, they're kind of the same deck. Anyways, I don't see this being good enough to play in tempo mage because tempo mage, a one mana, one, one, uh, which doesn't have any, like, say sticking power I, like it doesn't have any something like a mana worm or source or apprentice or you're scared of leaving it up with the spells you know all it does is generate a random spell uh but but for a reno control mage it's actually very good because it's almost like a zombie chow type card i mean while it's significantly weaker it's like it gives you something to do turn one that you're never like for a control deck, it gives you something to do turn one and you're never sad to see it late game uh, compared to something like Mana Worm where you're really not happy to see it late game in a control deck. Um, also, because as a control mage, you're not really... Like, you just can't have a curve that low like Tempo Mage, right? So a lot of times you're going to be Hero Powering turn two. Every control deck Hero Power turn two, turn two frequently, like Reno Lock, uh, Control where you know, you're not always, you know, Control Priest, you're not always gonna consistently hit a two drop. And with Babbling Book turn one, if you get it, you can, it's like, it turns your Hero Power more flexible because Mage Hero Power, unlike Warrior Hero Power or Warlock Hero Power, it's not always good in a control deck. It's like sometimes good. Uh, otherwise, it's like sometimes useless. You know, you ping their face turn two, it's like completely useless. Uh, whereas, you know, life tap is always going to be good. So, so is armor up kind of. So it's like it opens up a lot of things for your early game in a controlled mage. And it's like good late game as well. Has some synergy with uh, brand as well. So I, I'm going to rate this card uh, 2.5 out of 5 because um, control mage isn't really too powerful. Um, it is getting a lot of new new tools or new toys let's say there's even more that i'm going to go over in this card review later on but uh you know i'm still not super confident that it's going to be a, a strong deck uh, one of the cards the medivh for example so yeah it's 2.5 out of 5 because it's a i guess it's a okay card in a weak archetype like it's not even that amazing in, in control mage uh next Malchazar's Imp. Uh, so this is like, this card has a lot of, okay, so it's a one mana for one three demon, and whenever you discard a card, draw a card. So it's like Voidwalker without a taunt, um, with an, with a, another effect. It has a lot of synergy with new cards. It was, um, it's actually good to activate Abusive Sergeant, but it's much less good to protect your Knife Juggler and Direwolf. I'm thinking maybe we can not run Direwolf slash Knife Juggler with, with this type of deck and just run more discard demons, uh, like Succubus and, you know, uh, say Silver or Gold and things like that. I, I think though, in general, cheating some card draw in Warlock is is a little bit less important than other classes because, like, getting free card draw in Warlock when you already have Life Tap, it's like, yeah, you know, people generally don't run Loot Orders and Azure Drakes and Warlock. It's it's just even though they're common cards in other classes, so like I guess like just card draw in Warlock is much less important. Um, I rate this card 3 out of 5 because I still don't really see... I still think it's kind of a wash whether this kind of discard zoo is stronger than a normal zoo. You know, whether you can... Like, whether this synergy is more powerful than, like, Knife Juggler Forbidden Tentacle synergy, for example. Like, you're giving up other synergies to run this type of synergy. Um, but zoo is a very powerful archetype, and it seems like it's pretty close to some of these new cards, but... Um, I still don't see like this this card zoo being significantly more powerful, if even more powerful than the standard, uh, say like knife juggler zoo. Um, the next card, Karakazam, the other warlock card, or one of the other warlock cards. It's a five mana spell summon a one one candle two two broom and three three teapot. Seeing these uh, 
you know, minions are just vanilla minions. It has the same amount of stats as Silverhand Knight. It's a 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four, and a 2-2. Two, two. It's split up more. I was going to basically rate this card 1 out of 5. Uh, stats wise, that's not enough to justify over another 5 drop in Reno in Reno slash Control Warlock and in Zoo, you know, you're never really gonna be happy running a 5 mana for like just these vanilla stats. 6-6 six, six worth of stats, but you know, there's better 5 drops that do other things. Um, but because of the existence of a couple cards I thought of later, like Chogol in particular, uh, Chogol's a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven Warlock Legendary that Battlecry makes your next spell free that, that turn at the cost of life. Um, this card never is saw a lot of love just because it's like hard to play proactively and reactively it seems like too weird to play, you know, that type of card. Uh, just like a big 7-7 seven, seven minion reactively. Um, you know, you have like Siphon Soul, but this is like a proactive spell. It's just like drops a bunch of stats on board. Um, with Chogol, it's very strong. Uh, I was actually going to rate this even with like a little bit lower, like 2 out of 5 or 2.5, but you know, after Medivh comes out as well, uh, and Chogol, I'm going to rate this 3 out of 5 because I, I can mean, I, I see us having a lot of synergy with both Chogol and Medivh, and I can see both all these cards coming together in a Reno, uh, a Reno Control Warlock. Um, I think the lack of healing, neutral healing, or say Warlock healing outside of Reno does hurt Karakazam because, you know, for these kind of like Chogol Medivh Karakazam decks, you kind of want to run two Karakazams, but I do think they are still probably pigeonholed into Reno, so still only have one Karakazam in a deck that's, you know, built a lot around these big spells uh, with Medivh and Chogol, so... I'm probably gonna rate this. I'm gonna rate this three out of five uh, because of those reasons. There's there's something new coming up here. I feel and um, could be good. Next card I'm gonna do is Silverware Golem, the last Warlock card so far so far revealed. It's a three mana three three. If you discard this minion, summon it. So it's basically like a zero mana three three. Uh, in some situations, I guess you can play as three mana through three. In other situations, um, it's, I think it's mostly going to be on Doom Guard turns that would be activated because if you do like early Soulfire, it's so unlikely that this card's going to be like the only card in your hand after Soulfire. Um, I mean, you could like have like say you know Soulfire, Silverhand, Golem, and another card and just go for it. And then if you discard the other card, you can wait for Doom Guard for it still. Um, just a couple other cards. But yeah, if there's like an opportunity cost of it being in your hand the whole time until you discard it. Um, first, uh, I'm gonna rate this card three out of five. Uh, similar reasons to Maltrazar's Imp. It's like you can build a zoo shell out of Silverware Golem and Maltrazar's Imp, but I, th in my head, it looks like a kind of like a side grade to the zoo right now. I don't see that zoo deck taking over the meta. Uh, next we're going to do Protect the King. It's a 3 mana uh, warrior spell. It's kind of like a warrior unleash the hounds. For each enemy minion, summon a 1-1 one, one pawn with taunt. Um, charge is, is valued higher than taunt um, easily. As far as blizzard stat weights go, like, you know, you can, you can like, take a vanilla, like, 4-5, three 3-5 type, three, type minion, put taunt on it, like, ascension. Uh, but you can't, like, you know, have a 3-5 charger with for four mana right um and it's like that for everything like chargers are significantly weaker than taunters uh like taunts almost budgeted as nothing or as charges budgeted as a lot uh i don't ever see us being played in a control warrior because it's like it scales from the t number of minions enemies have but you know, there's tons of cards that scale from the type uh, from the amount of minions your enemies have, like Rowland, Revenge, you know, Brawl. Uh, I see this mostly the archetype that'd fit mostly is something like a mid-range warrior, so like something like a Dragon Warrior now or the old tempo mid-range warrior, like this these kind of decks. Uh, but you know, with the taunt slash bolster shell, um, I could see protect the king bolster, you know, fierce monkey things like that. And maybe with battle rage and some activators. Um, but I, I, I'm gonna rate this card two out of five because I still don't see enough to make that deck good over say dragon or normal tempo warrior. 
like a patron frothing shell. Uh, you know, I just see, <clears throat> I just don't see the. I see it significantly weaker than Unleashed the Hounds as well. All right, so next we're gonna get into some neutrals. Uh, actually, a, a lot of a lot of neutrals left still. Um, Bookworm. I'm actually pretty excited about this card because uh, there's actually a lot of a lot of synergy with this card, uh, the the new card, the Curator, and even Barnes Nazoth. Like I see this, I see this like mid range. I see like a new mid range pally potentially popping up, uh, less based on like token synergy like Quartermaster from the old one, uh, or or even Mysterious Challenger. You know, just the raw power of it, and more based on Dragon synergy, perhaps Nazoth synergy, Barnes. Uh, you know, this does a lot of synergy with Alter Peacekeeper for dragons. And you can always use more dragons in Dragon Paladin because you, you know you have the five mana five five dragon that discounts Battlecry by two, so it's like important to have a lot of dragons. Um, the stats of this three six is actually has pretty good stats against Dragon Warrior, which is one of the most popular decks for now. You know, it beats Alexstrasz Champion, Fairy Dragon, Cork Run Elite. Like it, it beats like it, it trades very well against these things, the small things, and even with the Bell Cry, it could also be good in, in some kind of like Reno Control Mages, and maybe with another Dragon, you could have just like a Reno Dragon Control Mage. Uh, I'm not too sure about that one over the Paladin one. Uh, this is like a three out of five for me. Bookworm seems. Like it could, you know, be one of the cards that boosts like a deck into the metagame or into, you know, one of the viable decks. And it's a powerful card. I feel like this is a pretty powerful card. I mean, six drops have a lot of competition, but I mean, it, it having a dragon tag is very, very powerful. And, and the effect is actually pretty powerful. It's like similar to Cabal and similar to Kodo in a way, uh, similar to even Black Knight in a way if you want to think about it like that, like Black Knight 6 mana for 4-5, kill, killing a taunt, this is a 3-6 but it's a dragon, 3-6-4-5 is pretty close, I actually think 3-6 is, might be better uh, budgeted stat wise than 4-5, you know it can kill the taunt dragon just like Black Knight can, the Twilight Guardian, probably one of the best targets for, book, for Bookworm. Okay, so next, uh, Pompous Thespian, one of the commons. It's a 2 mana for a 3 2 taunt. This one, is, I'm just gonna rate it 1 out of 5. Uh, I'm not gonna talk too much about it. It can have some bolster synergy, but Warrior already has better 3 2 taunts. I think Warrior is a 3 2 taunt. Does Battlecry give another minion taunt even? It's hard to justify that many 2 drops. Uh, you know, you can use both of them, but in other decks, it's just this doesn't trade well. You know, Druids had a. Anonymous, anomalized bear cub or something like that. Two three taunt or a three two taunt choose one and it was pretty much never used and that was a mech as well. It's not too much to say about it. It's just, it's, it's not constructed playable, you know. When when we get to ratings like three to three, four, or five out of five, it's like constructed playable. One out of five, two out of five is like not really constructed playable. One out of five is like not even too much worth thinking about. Zubot, uh, one point five out of five is Oh wait, I just said my rating, huh? But yeah, I think this card's too optimistic. Uh, kind of like Shattered Sun, old but old Shattered Sun, but even old Shattered Sun, I don't, I don't even know if it would be that great in, in this meta at this point. And um, Beast Dragon Murloc's not really, you know, zoo type card. Uh, you could have like an other, in other decks, like a what, like a Hunter with some beasts. With, but uh, no, I mean, I think it's too optimistic. If you want to have like, the, like if you actually want to have the random battle cry buff on like multiple means, like a, a beast, a dragon, and murloc, you have cards like Gormok that are just too much better in certain like activated scenarios where you know you get four plus minions and then you do four damage um, instead of this. So. I'm gonna rate this card 1.5 out of 5. I don't think it's too constructed viable. Um, the next card, one of the legendaries, neutral legendaries, Prince Malchazar. One of the things about this, this card is I think legendaries at the start of the game is much worse. Um, I'm comparing this card a lot to Elise Starseeker because they're both like add extra value to your deck and 
they add like say even random legendaries in the same way but i'd rather get the random legendaries at the end of the game compared to the beginning of the game because you top deck like just random junk legendaries and there's a lot of them uh it like so, so really deletes the power of your deck whereas at least you can guarantee that they all come at the end when you're mostly just in a value grind fest whereas the beginning of the game you're on like tempo plan you know like tempo plans mostly yeah you need to have strong tempo plays to keep up with the enemy five mana five six i don't think is amazing even though it's kind of like high stats but at least it's kind of high stats as well four mana three five so it's a demon but i mean i don't see that being too important either uh this is two out of five in my opinion at least it's too much better at least while at least in the meta and you don't really need both of them to grind anyone out generally getting to our last card it's Medivh the Guardian. This one I'm very excited about as well. Um, it's a 8 mana 7-7 seven, seven with Battlecry uh, equipped a Atish Great Staff the Guardian, which is basically like a weapon that just sits there. It's a 1-3 technically, but you probably won't be attacking with it most of the time. And what the weapon does, every time you cast a spell, you summon... It's a summoning stone, right? It, it is summoning stone. It's after you cast a spell, summon a random minion of that cost. That's very powerful. Um, I should just realize this is like summoning stone, except with stats. Summoning stone rarely got more than three cards from summoning stone before it died. And summoning stone is like a five mana zero six. This is you pay three more mana, but it's like a seven seven. And you, it's like since it's a weapon, it sits there probably. I mean, it's maybe semi weak to ooze, but. And that vein, like you could just say you can cast the spells on the same turn. I mean, the good thing about this is you can cast spells on the next turn. This is very powerful. Um, I see it being similar to Archmage Antonidas, like it cycles spells into value. It looks like a very powerful card in Control Mage and Warlock because they have high cost spells. Um, really excited for this one. Control Mage seems to have a lot of cool new stuff. I think it has a lot of synergy with Cabal's Tome and Flamestrike in particular. Uh, I can see like Medivh, Medivh decks running like the Curator, some, you know, some other powerful synergies in these kind of like mid-range slash control. And these are control decks like Reno Lock and Grinder Control Mage, but uh, they're much more like... The things that these things have... The things that these two control decks have in common compared to like Warrior and Priest is they're more proactive, you know, they're like... They're like really minion based control decks uh, compared to like reactive spell based ones in a, in a way. I guess Cthulhu wears more minion based as well now. Uh, this is like a 4 out of 5 in, in my opinion. It's It seems like a powerful card uh, and it's a card that can really bring um, control, War Warrior, control Warlock and Mage back into the forefront, into the meta. And it's a powerful card in those decks compared to like Babbling Book where it's like just, you know, a middling card in, in that kind of deck. Yeah, I think Medivh is very powerful. Alright, well thanks, yeah, thanks for watching my card review. See you guys next time.